Okay, uh, I still have a few more people I'd like to thank also. I'd like to thank the administration and Stan Hughes for all their support. I can't imagine doing this job without having 100% backing of those people. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to thank the coaches, Coach Kim, uh, Coach Overy, Coach Kabuski, and uh, our seventh and eighth grade coaches, uh, my brother Jason, uh, Mike Gildu, um, did an out in Mike Hayes, did an outstanding job down there. I think we're starting to see the benefits of the whole program uh, working together from seventh grade all the way through, uh, running the same offenses, and I never have to worry about, uh, you know, I give them things to run, and they take a lot of grief sometimes. Uh, about things not going the right way, but they are doing what I'm asking them to do, and as a head coach, I, I can't be more appreciative of that. I'd like to thank the players. If it wasn't for you, you know, I wouldn't do this job. Uh, that's what uh, keeps me coming back year in and year out, is the chance I have to work with you young men and uh, see you grow. Uh, I, I threw some pictures down on the table. Uh, parents, you should take a look at some of those. It goes back to uh, 1998 when they were in uh, our Mimby basketball camp. Uh, I don't know what grade exactly that was, but they were pretty little. And uh, there's some good pictures there. They all have the Mimby camp t-shirts on. And, uh, you know, it started way back then. And uh, it's continued, and, and we just hope to um, continue the success that we've had. I'd also like to thank the cheerleaders and the advisors. Uh, you guys have done a great job. Thank you for the door decorations. Thank you for not giving the players candy before games, uh, waiting until after, and uh, you know, we never had any problems, and your, your support has been great. I'd like to thank, thank the fans uh, for coming to all the games. I think pretty much every game we had, home or away, our fans outnumbered everybody else, and that was nice to see these guys appreciate it. I played it here, and uh, I guess it was probably because we weren't very good, but uh, you know we never had the fan base that we've had now these past few years, and it, it's just been awesome to look up in the stands and see everybody there and cheering night in and night out. Um, I know I appreciate it, and if they don't, they will in the future when they uh, when they look back on it. But there's two fans especially uh, that are here today that I I'd really like to thank um, Michelle and Leslie. Will you come up here, please? These two have been at every game. They're always the first ones at the game. Uh, they're always in the same spots. They uh, save, save seats for, um, for the players for us. We didn't have to worry about anybody sitting in the wrong spot. Uh, they were always there cheering. Um, Michelle had a full sheet cake made for the last banquet when we had it snowed out. And I thank you for that, Michelle. The players did enjoy it and cheerleaders uh, before school started the next day. We brought it in. Some of the teachers weren't too happy with me, but that's okay. Um, I'd also like to thank Christy Andre for uh, his help for athletic, direct, or athletic uh, trainer. Um, and Jerry Spansky and Jim Franco for doing the book. If you two would come up. They donated their time and were there every night and uh, helped us out. Um, and we have two young ladies that are seniors this year that I will miss dramatically. They could basically run practice for us. Um, they were there all the time. Um, their work this, uh, this year didn't allow them to come to all the practices like they had in the past, but I, I can't imagine if I sat there and added up the hours that these young ladies spent uh, volunteering their time for us and for the program. Uh, if we were late in the coaches' meeting coming out, they already had them jumping rope before we got out there. Uh, they knew the time to put on. They had everything set up. They washed towels for the games. They, I don't know how they're going to be replaced. They won't. And they're also a special place uh, in my heart, and I thank them for all their time, Tess and Katie.
also like to uh, thank, uh, this is taking longer than the whole bank would have to thank all these people, but uh, it, it wouldn't be successful if I, if I, if I ignored all this. And uh, I hope we can uh, appreciate the time I'm taking to uh, spend on this. I'd also like to thank my in-laws, Marty and Sherry. Uh, my mother-in-law is back there. My father-in-law would be here, but he had a commitment. Um, they're at all the games all the time. And it, it, they've been there ever since I started coaching. And uh, lastly, I'd like to thank you. Who are those peanuts up here for? <laughs> I'd like to thank my wife, Michelle. Um, you know, with having a baby, November 9th, right before our basketball started, I think it was a week before the first practice, uh, she was pretty much a single mom. And my daughter, Erin, she, uh, it was, it was tough for me this year because she got the age where she didn't want me to leave.
they were getting together over Brandon's or over wherever it may be, and they were playing basketball. This group of seniors loved to play the game, and uh, I've never seen such a group that was so committed to making themselves better. And I think that's what really happened at that five and five start. They looked themselves in the mirror and said, you know, we worked too hard and we're going to make a change. Um, I think our two biggest wins of the year were over Clearview 58-57. I think we, uh, we propelled them to their undefeated start, I think, because we were winning that game, if you remember, through uh, most of the third quarter. It was time going into the fourth quarter, and then the wheels kind of came off in the fourth quarter, and uh, they rolled on from there, and I think that kind of set us back a little bit, too, at the same time it got them going. But that win over here, 58-57, my hair is standing up as I'm talking about it. I mean, that was just a great win. And, uh, they got to play in meaningful basketball games this year, and they came out on top of most of them. Uh, we had six games to this year decided by two points or less, and we won five of them. And if you go back to last year when we were eight and thirteen, um, I wanted to look in the in the books, but I know we lost a lot of close games under four points last year. And this year we got it turned around, and, and we did it with pretty much the same people that are sitting here. The people are getting the majority of the playing time last year were the same ones we had coming back, and these same guys won eight games last year and 15 this year. And uh, I just think that shows the amount of effort they put in to make a change. Uh, after the Clearview game, we came right back, got to have Joe Tate announce our game, um, get a 65-58 win over at Keystone. That Clearview game and that, uh, that Keystone game back to back, I think is what really propelled us to win our final 10 games down the stretch. Those were two great victories. Over uh, two good teams, and uh, our conference was no slouch this year. When we talked about it, coach meeting, the papers, they talked about this season as being one of the most evenly based, se or based seasons that there's going to be in the LCC. Uh, if you look at the out of conference record going in, it was in the top five of the history of the league. So the team, uh, the teams that were playing out of conference before we got into it were winning their games. Uh, I thought, honestly, going into the season, four or five losses would win it. And for us to come out of there 12-2 and two, uh, and win 10 in a row down the stretch was just an awesome feeling. It was, it was fun. Winning makes everything easier, obviously. Uh, you know, it was fun. You could see the kids' faces, and the, uh, it was something they really wanted. And they, kind of, they really accomplished a lot. They were, like I said, they were a lot of fun to coach. The seniors will be great to miss, but I'm looking forward to carrying the momentum over that we have from winning this year and in the years past over to next year and go for our fourth, the Rain County Conference Championship. These guys won the third one. It worked, like I told you on your class and report, you have to work in all season as hard as these, these guys did if you, want, if you want to be successful. The highlight of the year for me probably was watching each and every one of them climb up the ladder and take a piece of the net down at the Avon game. That was, that was probably the highlight of the year for me, just to see the smile on their faces and see what they accomplished and they got a piece of history. You know, the year 2002 is going up in the gym forever and they're, these guys right here are the ones that brought that to us. Before I talk about the players, Individually, I have won a special award to give out. As I said before, I'm proud of where we're at right now in the program. And uh, as most of you know, uh, we're going to be losing the biggest part. Coach Overy, uh, his work is not going to allow him. He has, he has to make a commitment to work that will not allow him to be back coaching. When I go back, when I first got the head coaching job, and they were asking me to find an assistant coach, and I always wanted him right from the beginning. They said, no, you, you need to find somebody with experience. I, I know he's the best for the job. And uh, thank goodness uh, we're allowed to hire him. Uh, he's got a great rapport with the kids. His organization skills um, make me look a lot better than I am. Uh, 
Uh, he really, behind the scenes, did more than uh, any of you will ever know. And uh, this year, I was awarded the Coach of the Year, but I think it's a lot more deserving than Coach Orby's Coach of the Year at the County Conference this year. Uh, and really behind the scenes, 
probably made our post players better than anyone else. If I could point a finger to somebody, um, they, our post players sometimes uh, got mad at them uh, for playing so physical, but it definitely, definitely helped us in the long run. He always gave 100% effort. Um, at the beginning of the season, we were worried a little bit. Uh, we were going to lose him and, uh, with some medical issues, and he really stepped up, uh, fought through it, and it really showed a lot of, a lot of heart and a lot of effort, and was a big part of our team. Marcus is starts. Joe Mostad. Joe played in 12 varsity games this year. He is definitely a leader by example. Even when he's not in the game, he was always cheering his teammates on. Uh, I had numerous people in the stands tell me, you know, you're lucky to have that number 30 on your bench. You should see him during the game. My back's turned a lot, but uh, he's, he, they said he's always the first one up congratulating the guys as they're coming off, patting them on the back, making sure, you know, they're doing the best they can. Uh, when he gets in the game, he hustles all over the court. His effort and practice made us a much better team, as did his positive attitude. A little undersized in the post as far as height goes, but probably the best, one of the best guys that we have on the team as far as boxing out. Yeah, on tape every time I watch it. I never had to worry about him getting a body on somebody. And uh, he really did a nice job, man. He's a better team this year. Joe almost said. Luke Reese. Luke was another pleasant addition to our team this year. He played in five varsity games this year. Uh, but he got hit with the injury bug a little bit with a badly sprained ankle or probably played him more. Uh, he also worked very hard in practice and on the court. Uh, another leader, uh, natural leader, you can tell when he's out there, uh, always working hard, has good sense of humor, positive attitude. JV, he averaged 2.2 points per game and 2.1 rebounds, uh, played some JV time for us again. Uh, really got comfortable. And then he got the injury, and uh, you know the thing that I admire about that is sometimes when guys get hurt, they don't show up. He was there every day, whether he was going to practice or not, and worked real hard on his rehab, able to get back there at the end. And uh, class act, and he, he works real hard looking for good things next year. Luke Reese. Mike Worley uh, is not here with us today. He uh, had a family vacation that I knew about. Um, Mike did an excellent job for us this year. He played in 17 games during the varsity letter. Uh, he was able to spell green and at the point. Um, he has one speed and that's full goal. Uh, he really plays the game hard. He, has, he also has the quickness to be one of our defensive stoppers next year. Uh, he had season highs of 11 points, four rebounds, five steals, six assists. And his, his biggest basket probably was uh, at Keystone in the first half when he hit a big three-pointer for us. Mike Worley. <laughs> David Franco. <laughs> David started all 21 games for us this year as a sophomore. He scored in double figures of 14 of the 21 games. Uh, he led our team in field goal percentage. He was tied for rebounds. He was third in the team in free throw percentage. Third on the team in points per game at 10.7. In our 14 conference games only, he led the team in scoring field goal percentage and rebounds. His season high was 23 points and 11 rebounds at Keystone. Um, his defense really was what I was most impressed on with as the season went on, probably starting with a uh, game at Firelands against Higgins. He really picked up the defensive end this year, worked, worked really hard on his game, uh, played a lot, a lot, a lot of a AU basketball, a lot of summer leagues. He attended a post camp last year. Uh, he's improved a ton from last year, and the nice thing is we have him for two more. David Dupreme. Ryan Fairbin, Jr. <laughs> Ryan also started all 21 games this year. Uh, he's probably one of the most overall athletic players that I've 
coach uh, in all sports. As many of you know, he also pitches uh, in baseball. Um, he scored in double figures in 13 of the 21 games. He was second in scoring, where he averaged 11 points per game, tied for rebounds. Even though he was shorter than most of his opponents, his quickness and strength oftentimes gave him the advantage in the post. When he wanted to take over and pick it up, he, he was unstoppable. Two games that really stick out in my mind for him uh, were at Oberlin when he scored 21. I think 19 of those came in the second half. And then at Wellington, he was unstoppable. He had 24. For the year, he shot 47% from the field. He was not afraid at all to get on the floor, take a charge. He did so many good things for our basketball team to help us win. Uh, I, can't, I can't even name them all, but he's a competitor, and he loved to have competitors on the team. He, uh, he loves to get after it and um, hates to lose. Ryan Kirby. Aaron Fox. He started all 21 games for us this year. He scored in double figures in seven games. Uh, he was fourth on the team in scoring with 9.6 points per game. He sacrificed some of his scoring this year for the team. As you, as you noticed, uh, well, if we printed the stats, the stats you would notice, but as his assists went up and the scoring went down a little bit, he started creating shots for his teammates, and uh, we started to play better as that happened. The one thing that was consistent, well not one thing, he had a lot of things consistent, but the biggest thing for us to help us win, I think, was his defense. I wish the conference or the county gave out a defensive player of the year award because uh, I don't know how anybody could um, compare to what he's done. Uh, I, I can remember after the Firelands game here, uh, Jacob Alferio, one of their leading scorers, Aaron was assigned to him, and uh, after the game, somebody was sitting behind the bench and said in the first half, Jacob came over to Coach Lias and the players, he said, quit trying to throw me the ball, I can't get open. Uh, he really put the clamps down on people, he shut Sally down, Alperio, Bartlett, uh, you name it, we put him on the best guy. He's probably the best defensive player I've ever coached and probably the best one I've seen, uh, man on man. His season high was 24 points against North Royalton in the tournament. Two times during the year he had 10 rebounds. He led the team with 69 steals for the year, which is the most I've had since I've been coaching. I don't know if that's a record here at Midview. It's got to be awfully close. Uh, he had nine steals in one game one time, and he had eight a couple other times. He had 66 assists on the year compared to only 47 turnovers. The reason I'm going to point that stat out on these next few guys is because uh, Chaney, coach from Temple, always says the most important stat in basketball is assist to turnover ratio. If you can get up close to two assists to one turnover or better, you know, than one to one, uh, you're going to win a lot of games. And if you go back and you look at our stats last year, as a team, we had more turnovers than assists. This year we had more assists than turnovers. And that was, that was a big stat for us. That's something that I always look at. His career here at Midview, unfortunately, coming to an end. Uh, I went through when uh, the seniors also have all their career stats on there. One, so they can have them, two, so they can't lie in 10 years. Uh, he had 488 career points, which over his years, he averaged 11.1 points per game. He hit 32 threes in his, in his career, which was 30%. He had 113 steals in his career which again, Brian's up there, 212 rebounds, which averages out to 4.8 a game, 126 assists. He played in 44 varsity games and started 42 of them. Uh, so that's a lot, of, a lot of stats there, and they're going to be tough shoes to fill, but a pleasure to coach and uh, always play hard. Aaron Fox. Brandy Green. Brandon also started all 21 games for us this year. Brandon was one of our two team captains. He averaged seven points a game. In my opinion, he was the best point guard in the conference overall. Um, 
He led us in three-point percentage. I think uh, I think we were a very tough team to defend. I know if I was coaching against us, I don't know who we put who to put somebody on because we had different guys step up all the time. Uh, he had 86 assists, which averages a 4.1 and only 59 turnovers. 86 assists, 59 turnovers from the point position, as much as he handled the ball, is a big reason why we won 15 games. Uh, he handled the point guard duties excellent this year. He made great decisions, got the ball where we needed to. Uh, he probably dove on the floor more than anybody at least once a game. He always gave everything he had. I think he was one of our most consistent players throughout the year. He had seven or more assists in three different games. He made at least one three-point basket in 17 of our 21 games. You know, people are looking at us and they're saying, you know, the owner and Fox and these guys scoring this and that. Brandon was right there knocking down big baskets. Um, his season high was 14 points at Clearview. He's run the point the last two years and shown so much improvement, understanding what we want. Uh, he's really come a long way. His career stats, he ended up with 243 points. He shot 69% from the free throw line. He made 31% of his threes. He made 43 pointers. He had 49 steals, 150 assists, and started in 41 of the 44 games that he played. Brandon Green. Drew Elder. Drew also started in all 21 games this year. Drew was their other captain. He was their leading scorer at 12 points per game. He was in double figures 14 times. He shot 33% behind the three-point line. He shot over 51% from twos. 70.4 uh, from the free throw line. He averaged 4.2 rebounds a game. He had 10 rebounds at Oberlin. Uh, the one thing that I told Drew this year that I really needed him to step up was rebounding. And he went up about two rebounds a game this year as compared to last. He made a commitment probably more than anybody to be as good as he could be. He put in so many hours of work and developed probably one of the purest jump shots uh, that I've seen. He had a season high 20 points at a Larry Catholic. Anytime our offense was struggling, Drew seemed to be the answer. At Firelands, he put us on his back and scored 19 points on a night where we really struggled to shoot as a team. He was 8 for 11 from the field. Uh, tiger, 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 Tiger. Just kept on calling out Tiger. It was one of the plays that we had set up for him, and uh, he had some great shots. He had season high eight assists and averaged almost three assists per game. Uh, Pleasure coach, another hard worker, was determined to win this year and did everything he could and really put us on his back and helped us get there. Uh, his career stats, he ended up with 472 points, which is 11.2. He had 42 threes in his career and shot 38% in his career from three-point land, which is outstanding. He had 155 rebounds, 44 steals, 95 assists. He was a career 75% free throw shooter, 52% uh, on twos, and he started 40 of the 42 games that he played in. Drew Hillman. <laughs> Jeff Schaefer. Jeff played in all 21 games uh, this year, earning a varsity letter. Jeff gave us a great spark off the bench. Uh, his ability to run the floor enabled us to give teams different look from our post position. He, he offered some in the post position that all our other posts didn't. Uh, with his ability to run the floor and finish at the other end, uh, it was a great asset to our team. He shot 44% from the field. He had a season high 10 points and five rebounds against DC. Uh, he was an awesome team player, always doing everything he could to help the team win. Uh, I, I can remember at Wellington going to put him in the game, and he said, no, coach, put somebody else in. I, you know, let somebody else get some time. And that's just the type of person he is. I, I think so much of Jeff and, and, and the way he played and always gave 100% and always saw his team first. That's tough to do at that age. Uh, one of his biggest plays of the year was versus Keystone at home when we were down by two. He came off the bench, 
He was in there, and this is what he, you know, he, a lot of times his minutes weren't always up there, but when he was in there, he was an impact player. He came off the bench, stepped in, and took a huge charge, which I think was a turning point in that game and helped us win that game. Uh, he did that all year long. He also blocked eight shots. Uh, his career stats in 42 games, he had 80 points. Jeff Schaefer. Mike Krasenko. Mike also played in all 21 games this year, earning his second varsity letter. At the beginning of the year, Mike struggled a little bit uh, shooting, but the one thing that we really needed this year was another defensive stopper. Mike stepped right into this role, uh, along with Aaron, was able to shut opponents down. I, I heard him saying, saying to somebody, I think uh, I heard this from him, um, that I don't want to be known as somebody that shoots the three, I want to know what, as somebody that plays great defense. And that's exactly what he did all year long for us. Uh, he took a lot of pride in it. He talked on defense probably better than anybody on the team. He was probably the one person that you could hear in the stands uh, talking all the time. He ended up shooting 31% from threes after that slow start, which is outstanding. His best game, I don't think I have to remind you, it was his last game at home, something that you'll always remember, I think, in the state where he had 17 points and they have five or six three-pointers. He also had three assists and two rebounds. Mike's another one that hated to lose and did everything he could to help the team out. For his career, he had 165 points. He made 38 three-point shots. He shot 70% from the free throw line, had 49 assists, 23 steals, and played in 42 varsity games. Mike Pashenko. Ryan Wolf. Ryan played in 19 games this year, earning the varsity letter. He was tied with the team for the team and lead with block shots. He uh, played a very important role for us this year in helping us to win the 15 games. He was able to come in, use his size uh, to shut the opponent's big man down. The game that probably sticks out most in my mind with him was against Keystone at home, where he just, when he came in, Clouser couldn't get anything off over him. Uh, he shot 43% from the field. He made all of our post players better and was a big reason for our success. In uh, 30 varsity games that Ryan played in over his career, he shot 53% from the field and had 23 block shots. Ryan Moore. Uh, 
in the All-Star Game program, and they had listed the uh, top senior scholar, boys, basketball athletes, and mid you had three of the top eight in the county. And those were Ryan Wolf, Drew Oner, and Jeff Schaefer. <laughs> Going along with the All-Star Game, I'd like to thank Brandon Graham, Aaron Fox, and Drew Oner for representing Midview very well in the All-Star Game that was held uh, last Sunday. <laughs> we have some all-conference awards to give out. Um, Brandon Graham, I will mention. <laughs> Second team, Aaron Fox, Ryan Fairman, and David Graham. First team drill. As you notice, that's all five starters. I don't think I've ever been in mid when all five starters have gotten all conference recognition. That's just to go to show you that everybody that we played against thought of a different person that played well against them. Don't have any awards for these, but uh just wanted to mention that all county division one honorable mention for Ryan Fairbin and David Franco. Second team was Aaron Fox. First team was Drew Illner. And Drew also was uh, got Northeast District mention and was informed today. I didn't know about this one, but he was a uh, plain dealer. Uh, first team in the plain dealer today. I didn't get to see that, but that's what somebody said. During Coach DeFranco's uh, um, speech, then a lot of this won't be a big surprise, but uh, from our award board, we give out the person that had the most um, from each category uh, will receive a plaque. Our sixth man award, a no doubter, probably the best of, in the county for the past two years, was Mike Crescendo.
know, when I first started coaching here, I used to get and play against the kids, and you know, I wouldn't feel too bad. Nowadays, I just stand on the side and say, "Yeah, you're doing it right." Or whatever. <laughs> These kids are amazingly strong. I don't know if you really get a true feeling for how quick they are and how strong they are. But if you ever want to find out, Dad says you can't play sports anymore. You know, go one on one. And uh, you'll find out that these, these guys are amazing athletes. Um, I want to try to get through my thank yous. I'm going to cry, there's no doubt about that. And the reason is because I have a lot of pride in these kids. And when you put this much time into it, when your parents got a good, you can sit back there and your eyes get all misty and everything, you know, you don't have to speak. So um, I'll try to find my way through it. I'd like to thank my family. My parents are here. Um, they're always right behind the scores table with their 50-50 tickets. And uh, it's, it's a great thing when they hit it, but it's always really nice to have them in the, in the stands yelling at the officials and stuff for us when they give them the time. <laughs> Thanks, Mom and Dad, my wife, Sheila, and Hannah back there taking a nap, so uh, I don't know where she is. She's waiting. I'd like to thank her, uh, like Coach Touch. You know, when you have children, um, being away from them is a totally different thing, so there's nothing better when we're going through that losing streak. You walk in that door and there's just a little thing running at you. Fall on you pick her up, but um, just a beautiful thing. My wife is a great mother. Thank you very much. Uh, the administration for allowing me. Oh, go ahead. The, the administration for allowing me the opportunity to work at Midview and work with these great kids. Um, I don't think you get an appreciation of how good our kids are when you talk to other coaches. Um, we go to the coaches meeting, and you know these guys have stories that will put your you know, put your hair on it, but uh, we have great kids in the, in the uh, system. The administration allowed me that. I'd like to thank them. Um, I'd like to thank your parents for having these children because they made this year very enjoyable. After we were five and five, they made it a lot of fun. Um, but your parents were supportive and, you know, you were trying to find a way to say, hey, how can we correct this? How can we write the ship? Uh, your support and your work with these kids in the summertime and this all those meals is very much appreciated. Uh, the players, all the hard work that they put in, all the laughs, um, the job well done with the bitty ball. They, they're creating the future, uh, believe it or not, you know, you come in here on Saturday morning and it's pretty hectic, but these guys do a great job to ask them to step in and work with these little people. Uh, it's just phenomenal to see. Um, it, it'll be really enjoyable when those kids are playing varsity someday and you got to pay five bucks to come in. Look that kid, yeah. But you did a fine job, you should be proud of that. Um, I'd like to thank the kids also for putting in another championship on the wall down there. That's awesome. I don't know the stats, but my mom was the first graduating class here from New York. But if you go back through the years, there's probably a half a dozen basketball championships. So if you put it in that context, what you've done is huge. Congratulations. And I'd like to thank the coaches on um, I'll still be around, I just won't be here every day. And uh, to work with these guys and fight with them is really what's helped make the kids great. But um, there's no no greater people to work with than these guys. They're a lot of fun. Um, I was asked to read something that a parent wrote. And uh, if you think I can get through it, then you got nothing coming. I'll do my best though. It's called the senior stick. He goes this way and that, we can get inside and out. <laughs> Ten seconds to get there, no turning back. Operating at the speed of sound, two feet flying, head first diving, fearless to those surrounding, no one passing, assisting others on their journey, a direct race floor general who enjoys the three, the point guard number 14 Brandon. Smooth as silk with the velvet touch before you blink you have scored a bunch. Works in a manner much like an artist. They switch here and switch there, the canvas is his motion. And his and his portraits are the result. Gliding in the air, you would swear it isn't fair to those who dare to welcome his shot. The pure shooter, number twelve, Drew. He'll steal your thunder, he'll take your best, then roll you under. Don't take his test. His reckless driving will make you cringe. If a tireless trying happens again and again. Twisting and turning, he can dance all around. Who set out to stop him only to fall? His model was quite simply changed this year. I'm here to play defense, the buck stops here. The athlete, number four, 34, Aaron, or 23. <laughs> 
striding like an animal with a vision to behold, his focus on his finish line, a layup was his goal. Taking on the larger challenge, giving every inch of his worth to the consummate teammate who could leap over heights and sneak around the girth. A gentle soul who always pleases the crowd, a true friend to those around him, and a guy from bench. He makes his teammates proud, the jumper number 32, Jeff. The eye of the assassin, with gunslinger's pride, once he's on fire, he will shoot out the light. He blankets his opponents with sheer determination above all, and his voice can rattle the rafters, crying, ball, ball, ball. He favors these sweet spots, waiting for the pass, keeps poetry in motion when he's cooking with gas. The shoot is number 24, Mike. Six foot eight, he's taller than most, can dunk without too much effort to areas along his post. His arms block your vision, your path to the paint, he'll alter your delivery and make you wish you weren't in the game. Don't be fooled by his flowing long hair and his white headband. Stay out of his house or your shot will be introduced to his hand. The post, number 42, Ryan. <laughs> to the six seniors, Superman, Wolfie, Hooper, Hoop, Hooper. <laughs> Mikey, Drew, and B, you have been giving us lifetime of memories and from all of us, your coaches, family, and friends, we bid you a fond farewell. Your shoes will be a challenge to the bill. Your act will be hard to follow. But this week, promise, and will always and forever hold true, we will really miss you. A few more awards. Uh, go back to now. Uh, Mr. Defense Award. I think we've talked enough about this. Our Mr. Defense this year is Aaron Fox. Aaron had the most Mr. Defensive stickers on his board and the most Mr. Hustles on their board. Our Mr. Hustle for this year is Brandy Green. Next, I'd like these following people to come up and stand right up here, please. 
Seth Gunner, Todd Matthews, Marty Sarkin, Joe Mostad, Luke Reese, David Franco, Ryan Fearman, Aaron Fox, Brandon Graham, Drew Elner, Mike Pashenko, Jeff Schaefer, Brian Wolf. The last plaque that we have to give out is the MVP plaque. And without these 14 guys right here, we would not have won the conference. As I told you before, we had five different guys step up and get off-conference recognition. We had guys come off the bench and do great things. We had guys in practice that made us a better team. So our MVP for this year are all these young men right here standing in front of us.
we got a card for Chris, but he's not here, so we'll just uh, find him in school someday. <laughs> As a team, we'd just like to thank a lot of people. We'd like to thank all our parents for uh, dealing with us around Christmas time when we weren't doing so good. I know my poor mom probably didn't want to be around me. But uh, in all the administration, Mrs. Babola going to the games far away all the time, we noticed that. And Mr. Hughes, he's been great over all our years here. And we're sad he's leaving, but he was definitely great. And uh, the coaches, just me personally, these coaches, coaches have just been one of the greatest things in my life. They've been there for me, talking to me, helping me out, and they, they just made me so much better. And the way they pulled us all together to achieve our goals was just, was just great, and I just like to thank them.